Alright guys, I'm trying to fix my table here. I don't know what's going on with my bed desk. Oops. But it's starting to get on my nerves. Alright, so I haven't blogged in a couple days. But I don't blog in a couple days and so I say breaks because I, lately I haven't had the time to research all day or be up all night. I've been giving my body a break. I've been trying to get some proper sleep and I've just been doing what was best for me personally. So um, I want to get into some new developments, some new research, some new things that's um, been going on. So I want to start with new things that I've been seeing. I've been seeing this COVID-19. Yeah, COVID-19 slash uh, sars dash cov 2 which makes sense. I saved this before. SARS is, um, it, may, it it's with, it's with the, it makes sense, period. So, but what we, they don't know what COVID is. We just know that it has something to do with the respiratory system. And SARS is a severe acute respiratory syndrome. So that system, so that makes sense. So these studies have been, um, that I've been reading through a couple people, a, a couple medical sites on here, John Hopkins and all that stuff that I told you guys about before, that they have done a study, a study of a comparison of patients who have died from the flu virus um, and patients who have passed from COVID. They compared the lungs of patients who passed from the flu and patients who passed from COVID. The findings were, and I'm going to narrow this down as much as I can. In my caption, I will, I, will re, I will put more information in detail in there. I don't want to have a whole long prolonging video because then I have to clip it into two. IG sucks with that. So, um... This, this is, I'm going to narrow it down. What I've confirmed was two things. COVID, COVID it, invades, it invades the lining, right, of the ves blood vessels. This is the research that they find. I'm going to try to get this word right. Yes, I don't, my anatomy is not on fucking point still now, okay? I've been out of school. But the endo, endo, Lithium. I'm going to put that in my caption. That's anatomy, but it's basically tissue formed around the um, tissue formed around like the layers of the vessels of cells of the lining, lining of it, um, which controls many organs of the body. Uh, let's see here. So what they found was, okay. So here we go. Facts. So he was, he was going to start with the facts. So patients with COVID blood tend to congeal, which means the medical term for it, clotting. So patients with COVID, their their um, vessels and arteries, their veins and stuff, were causing clots. Okay, stick with me. They're causing clots. I'm trying to explain this. Instead of medical terms, yes, I have my notes. My, my, my book, I have all my notes here. My book is full of notes. I write down my own notes. Um, so it forms into into clots. My fan is blowing every fucking thing. Um, so it makes it difficult. Common sense. So if if your if your if your veins is forming clots, it makes it very difficult for it for oxygen to get through. It slows down the process. So when these patients come in with these respiratory with these re respiratory symptoms and issues, they are now seeing that they have they are determining these clots. They they weighed out the options, pros and cons. They they, they weighed them. They're weighing them out from the flu and from from um, COVID patients. They're seeing difference between what was going on with the lungs and the respiratory system, and this is what it came down to. Which makes total freaking sense. So, what's the line? The lining of the heart, the endo endolithium, is is um, located on the inner walls of the heart chambers. 
Okay, so it's in the in your heart, the inner lining of the heart chambers. Okay, so if the veins around there are are clotting from COVID, are clotting. There's no oxygen getting through there. There's no oxygen getting through there, so it makes it makes it difficult for blood flow and oxygen to get into the heart. So when doctors when these patients come into the hospital and the doctors are putting these tubes in these patients for medication to go through for um uh what else for medications and uh transfusions or whatever these patients may need to go through they're not fully going through because there are clots there so the clots is slowing down the process i hope this is making some sense to you so I'm going to jump to something that I, I personally um, did. I just really broke all that down. And I wrote all this stuff, like, for no reason. So, the vessels that are blocked, the vessels that are blocked are as thin as a fucking uh, a hair, hair string. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Right? So, basically, the blood vessels, when they clot, they're, they're basically, they're dropping. They're dropping. So, it's like... Okay, once these vessels drop, it's like someone with a heart condition. With a heart condition, you're you're prone to have a heart attack or have a stroke when these things happen, you know, or and go through bypass surgery to save you, you know, or get stents and, and things of that sort. So that's basically what's happening. What well, they're assuming is happening. Now, these types of blood clots that's in the COVID patients, there were about two times more than the patients who have died from flu. Okay, two times more. So common sense to study is, is is basically saying this. Blood flow clotting in veins and going to the heart, common sense is cutting blood flow. That's just all common sense. I think we all can agree with that and come to terms with that, basically, definitely. So which is a critical condition. So we have so here we have three things. So I'm gonna go into Three things that we have that I'm narrowing all down to what I just said, basically. Number one, the lining of the lungs is developing clots, right? Making it harder for the vessels to work. Two, it makes it difficult for medication and fluids that the doctors are trying to give these patients to get in through the vessels, to get into the heart. So it's slowing down the process, which I said, which could cause high risk of heart attack, stroke, or so forth. Number three, three, one to three, that's it. This is the three I'm sticking with. The vessels blocked by the clots are so thin as your hair, okay, a hair string. It makes it difficult for gas, for gas exchange. What's happening here? Hold on. Sorry, guys. Um, For gas exchange within the lungs. Common sense. You, your heart needs all those things. So I'm going to, sorry, let me move all my stuff here. I'm going to try to get you guys to see and, and understand this anatomy, okay? I might bring my phone over here, so please deal, like, bear with me. But I want to show you guys exactly what I'm trying to explain to you. And this is, this is my book. Like, this is, I'm going to show you. Did I show you? All right, best I can. I'm going to show you guys. All right, so right here, right here, these little, these little things, these things right here, these are pulmonary veins that carry that carry blood from the lungs. These things right here, one, two, then we have over here. Okay, so I circled these ones because let me tell you, this is where the blood, the pulmonary veins carry blood into, into the lungs here, into the lungs here. Okay, this goes here. You see these ones? They're going into here. Now this, this light pink area that I circle with the circle right here, if you guys can please see, this is where the oxygenated, this is where the blood gets oxygen, oxygenated right here. Right, so if all of these are clogged, 
that's not the blood flow and uh, that's not it's not getting in it's not getting in there okay makes sense i hope this is making sense to you guys so now i'm going to go down here and show you something real quick this right here this is the heart all of this is protecting the heart and all these things have to go in through the heart so if the vessels and all these um things are clotting there's no way for flow of blood, oxygen, or anything to get into the heart chamber. Okay? I hope that makes sense to you. So, like I was speaking to you guys about the, um, about, um, endothelium. I'm surprised I'm definitely fucking saying it wrong. The lining of the, the inner lining of the walls of the heart. Bringing me back. Sorry, guys. I hope that came out okay, but I think that's how we would edit it. The lining of the heart, that protects that. So, if the inner medium is, look, it's just the inner part of the of the thing. This is what they said. It invades the lining of blood vessels, a tissue called endolithium. So, if that is invading the endolithium, that means the heart is also compromised. So, it, now we have... The veins block with clots. So no blood, no oxygen. If patients come in, doctors are giving them medications and fluids. They're not fully getting all the medication and fluids because there's, there's clots there. So they're blockage. So then, even if it is getting, whatever is getting in there, even into the heart, that lining of the heart, endo, endothelium, I'm saying it wrong. I'm so sorry. I'll get it correct when eventually. But... I'll put in my caption the meaning of it. That's even being compromised. So that's even stopping it. So of course, all makes sense of it's circulation. You, how do you survive? You, you need the blood flow in the body. You need the oxygen. Okay? It all you, you need all that in there. And it all has to get to the heart. It all has to get there. So if all that's compromised by blood clots, what do you do? What do you do? So here we go with the questions. You found this research. What do you do about it? What can we, how can we prevent it? How can that be prevented? Catch it early on. But not very many people are catching it early on. Because a lot of people, once again, getting false negatives. A lot of people don't even know they're sick. And they're just popping up one day, going into the hospital in critical condition. And then it's too late. This is facts. So, it's still, it's still so many things that are being found. So many things that are being theories. Things are being discovered. But there's no answers. Be why? Why? What the fuck? Why? Because they don't know what the virus is. They don't know what it is. The only thing they do know for sure is SARS, which is the fucking respiratory system. Because obviously that's what it's causing, the respiratory system. So it's effects. So yes, of course, it makes sense. Include SARS. Then they're going to say, then eventually MERS is coming up in there. MERS is coming up in there. So they're going to add all the viruses up in there. So coronaviruses is combined with all these viruses from the past. Okay? Way before November, people were in the hospital for bronchitis, pneumonia, getting diagnosed with the flu, sick for weeks. But that's what they were diagnosed. That's what they were being diagnosed with. Luckily, the obviously these people think thankfully caught it on early and got treated for it. But China been told, and there's been studies that said China been told. In January, beginning of January, that this was going on. We're being cheated. This is why when people speak to me, and you speak to me about, oh, and, and I know what people are speaking to me about. You're speaking to me about what you see on the news, what you're reading, and all this stuff. You no, know, you're not really doing real research. I have, let me show you guys my computer, how many tabs. I got my crap over here. I'm going to pull my stuff out of my way. Let me show you how many tabs. I have open here. Come on, guys. That's what I, I was on my YouTube. I'm on my YouTube, my face, Facebook, every freaking thing. 
And I even showed you the books. I hope you guys got that a little bit. I hope you guys really, really got that a little bit. All right, so. Oh, wait, come back. I'm on actual, actual sites. I'm on, that's my YouTube, but I'm on actual sites. John Hopkins, all of that. And I, and, and, and I don't just sit here and just look at stuff. No, I'm clicking on every little single thing. I'm checking each doctor. I'm seeing this scientist, how reliable is this scientist? How reliable is this site? How reliable is their resource? You understand what I'm saying? I hope you guys really understand what I'm saying. I know I'm, I've been blogging about this, but I, I feel like it's very important because now they are reopening things. And, and, and it is not good. North Carolina in one day had gained so many cases. North Carolina. Maryland gained so many cases from opening up a little bit of things. People are getting excited. I'm not excited about shit opening right now because you want to know why? There's no answers. We have no fucking answers. We have no fucking answers. We have no answers. And I'm so happy that I went and got retested and I'm negative, but I still have these antibodies in my system that is affecting me. And they last in your system for a while. They don't even know. One man, they lasted in his system for seven months. And he still is having symptoms. Same as mine, but I said this in my last block, breathlessness, dizziness, lightheaded, fatigue, all this stuff that I am experiencing. And I'm not saying that's what I have. They're saying I have Senscope. So, okay, that's it. That's a, it's a, it's a diagnosis of someone who has, you know, some neurologist, so I need several neurologist, and you have faint spells and this and that. But my cardiologist, believe, no, you need to be tested for all these other stuff. Like, why didn't they do these testings for you when you came in there if you had the virus? There are, there have been concluded that people who are having symptoms after being cleared from this virus i pass out my home and i go to a hospital and you guys didn't do no further testing on me didn't give me no iv no medication no nothing gave me a ct scan with no contrast dye thank god because my car they don't want me with that in my system no 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 fucking radiation in my system but still that's all you did and drew some blood and did a basic panel test on me tells you basic things <laughs> Like, are you, are you fucking kidding me? You have to be fucking kidding me right now. So th this is this is what I look into. And I hope you guys were able to see the way I was breaking down the, the anatomy of the heart. Or how the valves, is, if they're blocked, how they can't enter. And the part where I showed you the heart and the lining of it. And how the veins and the arteries go. Everything goes in through there. How the oxygen and the blood goes into there. So if the lining of the heart... That those things are going into heart and they have clots and the lining of the heart is even being compromised. The endo, endo whatever, lenium, I'm going to put it in my caption again. I'm going to keep saying that because I don't know why I can't, can't, can't get the freaking name right. But if that's compromised too, we have all those all those factors that is, a, is, is compromising patients to be cured if they can. So what they're trying to do now is find out how can we, let me click on this. How can we prevent this? How can we stop it? You know what I mean? Like, how can they stop it? Hypoxia is a condition or state in which the supply of oxygen is insufficient for normal life functions. That's what it is. Hypoxemia is a condition or state where there is a low atrial oxygen supply, which I showed you. <laughs> low oxygen supply. So if you have these clots and these things are going in, absolutely giving you low oxygen supply. If you're getting the oxygen, it's going in, but it's not going in as fast as it should be going in because you have the clots. It's blocking. It's blocking. Shortness of breath, rap rapid breathing. Fast heart rate, confusion, possible coma or death, inability to communicate. It's ridiculous. And the, like you need the gas, you need the blood, gas, the oxygen, all that, all that, all that. 
So in the same category, same anatomy, all in the anatomy of the heart, the respiratory system. Well, that goes together. You need all that the heart to go into the, to, to your fucking lungs. Hello? For it to work, it function. Hope that made some sense to you guys. I'm going to put as much as I can in my caption um, to explain a little bit more. Because I, I did get a little jumbled up. I always get a little jumbled up when I get on this topic. Because it's just like, I wish I was a freaking doctor and I could go in here and, or a scientist and just be like, what can I do now? Can I, can I, can I contribute to something because this is like really really ridiculous and i don't know why i think people think that this is going to ease up i don't think it's going to ease up because they have no solutions all this time all this time it's about to be set eight months all this time and no solutions no answers still to what the fuck we are dealing with how can any of you feel safe or secure how how When they go in to intubate people, when they when when they see them losing their oxygen, it's not going through. Brea says it. It's making it difficult. It's making it difficult. It's making it very difficult. It's making it very difficult, and we have, we have, um, we have plenty, plenty. We have so many veins. We have the pulmonary artery disease. We have to, We have so many, so many arteries. We have the, the superior vena cava, the pulmonary veins artery that carries from the lungs. We have the left, your left atrium, your right atrium. They all play a certain part of role, but they all contribute to this, uh, the same thing. They do. Like the left atrium fills with oxygenated blood. Pulmonary veins carry blood blood from the lungs the right atrium fills the deoxygenated blood all this stuff is being compromised from the clots from their studies and the crazy part is plenty of patients are not showing no symptoms they're just being hit like boom Mine, I can't, I, I don't know what my symptoms were. I knew what my symptoms were, but when did they begin? I don't know. Because I was in the hospital the week before. I was in the hospital the week before that. I'm always in the fucking hospital. I could have been exposed from the hospital. I don't know. I was always in the, I was in the hospital. I, I could you go scroll down and go see when I was in the hospital before I started posting about my, my coronavirus. I was in the hospital for my heart condition. I was in the hospital because of high blood pressure. I was in the hospital because I couldn't breathe. I was in the hospital because I was having these uh, flares and all this stuff and they couldn't figure out certain things. So those could have been symptoms for me. I don't freaking know. Nobody knows. And then boom, I got hit with the fever. If I would have laid my ass in this motherfucking bed and then get up when I said when I say I take when I woke up from that nap, and said I was gonna go to the hospital, if my fever spiked, if I didn't do that, only God knows. Only God knows. That's it for today, guys. Thank you. Um it's five in the morning so i'll probably be posting this tomorrow um if i will not be posting um all of this video please watch the continuation on my youtube you don't have to subscribe you don't have to do anything but if you're very interested please go it will be the last video um i mean the first video um posted because i'm going to post it um on my thing and just watch the full tutorial because this is like 25 minutes or so of a um of a video so um if you can, please do that. But I will try to post as much as I can on here. But if you, like I said, if you're interested to see more, please go view it on my YouTube channel. Link is in my bio. If not, just type in my name, Shamika Carter, or, pardon me, or Meek Carter underscore advocate. That's it. I'll pop right up. So, thank you guys. God bless everyone. Be safe. Much love. Thank you for, oh, and everyone, thank you so much for my baby's birthday. Um, blessings. He had a blast. Um, I had my moments where I couldn't breathe and 
I was just going through a lot too as well, but I pulled through and I made it and, you know, thanks to my sisters, my neighbors and my nieces and my nephews and everybody. Um, they're, they're his aunts. It was amazing. It was really a great day. It was, it's been a while where I've been surrounded by family. So for me personally, it meant a lot. And for him, it meant a lot because he was just so happy. He was smiles all day. Smiles all day. He needed that. He needed that. And I'm very excited about my niece's um, party um, next week. So very, very excited about that. Be around family again. So very excited about it. Yeah, it's a great thing. I needed it. I needed it mentally, emotionally, physically. I just, I needed it. I needed the love. I needed, I needed to see faces and I just needed that. I needed it. It's been so long for me. I, I needed it. I've been so isolated. I haven't been around anyone. I haven't been around anyone. It's crazy. But thank you guys. Holla at you later. Meet Carter Love.